We're going to butcher the lamb. Uh, he weighed 90 pounds, uh, and we're getting about 45 pounds of meat out of him, including uh, the heart and the uh, liver, testicles and such, probably 45 pounds of meat, which is about right. About uh, You want them to dress out at about 45-50%. Uh, uh, and uh, now I've been feeding him pretty good. He got a, he got a good bit of fat on him. Uh, if you're looking for someone that absolutely knows what they're doing, this may not be the video to watch. But if you're looking for somebody that tries and will show you his mistakes and uh, and you can learn with, then this may be what you want to watch. I've I've watched several videos. My understanding, you want to come back from the on the sixth rib. You count one, two, three, four, five, six ribs, and then you're going to want to split it there. So I'm going to do that. My dad was a butcher, and if he saw this, saw me doing this, he would probably, I know what he'd do, he'd laugh his butt off, but that's okay. If he wanted me to do it any better, he should have taught me better. <laughs> and I have used uh, just a metal blade on a recip. Uh, I've got his old handsaw, but I did not buy a, a new blade for it. And it's probably so dull that I, I should probably try it just to, to give his old handsaw a, a whiz. But uh, but this uh, this has worked pretty good. Just a, a cordless recip with a uh, uh, with a metal blade, a little fine tooth blade. Okay, and we're going to cut it into what is called the primal cuts, and I may not be doing that just perfect. I may not be doing it. I am not doing it perfect. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, if I understand him, I've watched a video. They've a guy in England named uh, Scott Ree, R E A. And uh, he's got some excellent videos on cutting up deer and sheep and uh, everything else. They're, they're long videos, but he's very detailed, very uh, knows what he's doing. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to come up to the. There's a, a kind of a backbone, a joint right there. I'm going to come up to the second vertebrae and I'm just going to kind of square it off here cut through that that's going to be your loin section going to have your lamb chops good 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 loin in there um, I believe he calls this the breast which I think we would call that the brisket Right there, I'm just gonna lay them out. Lay them out as they came off the sheep, the lamb. Uh, here, I'm going to cut this about right there. Knee joint is right there, just above the knee, to give me a nice uh, shank uh, meat, a nice meaty shank. He may uh, he may come a little below that. I, I forget now, but I'm gonna start at the knee and just come across, and I'm gonna get four different uh, roasts here uh, leg of lamb roast or whatever they want to come right here get the bone that is one of my dad's old knives there that is a real nice shank of lamb, I believe they call that. I'll just take the bottom part of it off. Doggy will love that. And that's got a lot of meat on it. That'd be a nice, nice thing to slow cook. Maybe even barbecue, not sure exactly how to cook it yet, but we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna cut some roast. That's gonna be a, probably about a two pound roast, two pound roast, and then this one gets into the, uh, what he calls, I think, the chump, which uh, I believe we're gonna call that a chuck. And uh, kind of trim it up a little. If I act like I know what I'm doing, you are being misled, severely misled. <laughs> All right, let's uh, 
Let's make a nice, about, that's about two inches. You could come in here and just bone, uh, I mean, uh, strip out each muscle, each muscle group, come in here and find the muscle, the separations, and do that and make you some steaks. Uh, that is something that I considered, and um, I'm not going to do it. If I do, uh, I don't think I'm going to do it. Bet you never thought about using a reset for this, did you? Nice. Roast. Bone in, you can take the bone out. You got a bone here that we're gonna deal with in just a minute. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut this roast just where I don't have to mess with that bone right now. I believe that's the H bone. Or as Scott Reed would call it, the H bone. My dad was very, very good at this. Butcher for about 40 years. Being in Texas, I don't know that he ever did lamb. He did a ton of deers when it was deer season. And they used to have to cut them up, and he hated that. But mainly beef. Got a little uh, bone dust on it. That needs to come off before you cook it. Uh, that's just from the saw, and it would happen even if you used a uh, conventional saw, a uh, hand saw. Still got to get bone dust. Now on this one. I just think... I think we're just going to go ahead and cut it and make a nice roast. That would make a good roast. And up in here, you've got the backbone to deal with. We'll do something else different there. But I believe this is, I'm going to show you, that's the way it came, the backside. This is uh, just going to do another roast right there. We've got a little bit more bone to deal with. Big roast. Got some bone there. I'm gonna take that and my point is if I can do this you can do this. Like most of my videos I am not claiming like all my videos I'm not claiming to be an expert on anything but I have uh, not afraid to get my feet wet. Not afraid to jump in and try something. And some things you just dead gum need to know how to learn. I mean, need to learn how to do. Need to know how to do. And I think if you're going to be on the homestead, if you're going to rely on meats, livestock that you raise, I'm a firm believer. I'm just trying to take this bone out. I'm a firm believer you ought to know, even if you don't do it, you ought to know how to do it. And this is my first time for a sheep. Not a whole lot different than a deer, but even on a deer, most people just, uh, that looks horrible. <laughs> on a deer, most people just uh, uh, field dress it and take it to a processor. So I'm just going to bone this, rest this uh, out for grind. Be some nice ground lamb. And this will make another nice roast. Some good fat on it. And a nice little roast. Kind of coming apart, but it doesn't have a bone in it to hold it together, so that's probably why. So there's three nice roasts. Let me put it up this way so it'll look a little prettier to you. Three nice roasts and a shank. This is going to be another roast, and I, I could leave it, leave the uh, vertebrae and such in it but I just don't know how uh, how that spinal cord going to cook up <laughs> may not uh, may not cook up so well so I'm going to try to get this out of here 
and it's the way it's shaped and situated and stuff, it's kind of strange. So, and this again may be, may wind up being more grind than anything. It's got some good meat in it because you're getting real close to the loin right there. I'm sure that's very tender meat. And the glove I am wearing is a um, cut resistant glove, Kevlar glove, that I highly recommend because I would have, uh, ooh, that's, I think that's going to be a nice roast too. Just by itself for two people. Or maybe y'all eat more than we do, but uh, I think we're just going to keep that hole in it as a roast too. But the, it's a Kevlar glove, cut resistant. Um, I've, I'll put a link to it on Amazon below the video. So you will check that out. It might be something that you want to, uh, before you get involved with uh, wielding a knife on your homestead or around your place or cutting up a deer or whatever out on the deer lease you may want to invest uh, I think like gosh five dollars ten dollars something like that for two both of them are kind of ambidextrous fit either hand and uh, I've got some got a neoprene on the other hand here and all that will be uh, boned out a little bit better For, uh, for hamburger meat. But that is some good meat, good lean meat. Doggy gonna have a doggy gonna have a field day when I get done with this. And I'm not gonna spend just a ton of time boning it out. You get the picture. You just try to get all the bone all the meat you can off the bones and that will be that will go in your grind. And uh this is the uh middle section I know they've got a better name for it is the primal cuts and I have forgotten it the loin I think the loin section and what we'll do is um, and this is your back strap if all you wanted out of it uh, if you if you didn't want to mess with the ribs and and all that stuff then you could just um, you could just pull the back strap out. That's the back strap right there. That's your that's your best meat right there. And on this particular animal, it's uh probably 18 inches, maybe 20 inches long. Uh, we're gonna leave that on uh, the ribs, and um, um, I say we are. We may do this side different than we did the other side. Let me think for this. One. So we've decided to go ahead and take out the loin, what we call the back, back strap of the loin, and just stake it out, uh, cut stakes on it, and then I'm going to try to shave down these ribs, uh, down those ribs there. You can see the ribs just don't have hardly any meat on it. So shave it down uh, and keep this brisket, I'm, I'm going to call that a brisket, he calls it, Scott Ray calls it a breast, I believe we call that a brisket here, and try to keep that whole, roll it up, put it in slow cooker, it ought to be awesome. Uh, let me sharpen my knife. I just, first time I've used it, this Lansky sharpener, it is good. When I first started cutting the other side, and this is the second half of the, uh, the lamb, we've already did the other half, kind of practiced, <laughs> practiced on it. Uh, I was hitting the, the stainless steel table sign. By the way, that's a neat table. I just bartered for that. It's about a 30 inches wide and 4 feet long. Did a little bartering for that. Nice stainless steel table. Um, I was I was hitting the table with the knives, dulling the knives, and that came in real handy. I'll put a link to one of them little puppies below the video also. So let's take out the back strap or the loin. And at some point, it should just pull out of there pretty easy. We hope. And he was a fat one. Now, 
most people would be real correct in leaving this on the chops. Well, I'm ripping it. We don't want to do that. We'll leave it whole. Well, there's your loin. Trim it up just a little. Again, folks, I am not an expert at this, and some of you are laughing. Some of you butchers out there are laughing. My dad's up in heaven laughing. I cut these in about inch, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Loin steaks, fillets, if you will. And this, I'm going to try my best to take off that rib, take that brisket off those ribs. There's just so little meat between the, gosh, that's thin. There's just not hardly any meat there. Jack's lonely out there. In the distance, braying at the sheep. Still got them separated. This is a little different than the way we did the other half, but I think, I think I'm going to like this better. Now that is a nice piece of brisket. would say square it off be in the grind and then just roll that dude up probably take a little more of the fat off of it Slimy fat anyway, the thick fat be good. And I'm boogering it up, so I think I'll just leave well enough alone. Anyway, roll that dude up. And put that in a slow cooker. That gum is gonna be good. Alright, got a little bit on here to bone out. That's a Tender probably be just as good as the back strap. I'm not sure that's what they call it, the tender, but I think it is. And that's some good stuff. Right? Put make that stew meat, or you can slice it, and uh, or just fry the whole thing, fry it like that. In in with the uh, back straps. Like I'll put it in with the back straps, with the fillets. Just do that separate one piece. Be nice, nice, nice. All right. There's a little bit of meat 
here that will go in the grind in between the ribs you know there's just not hardly any meat you know if you want to go through all that to get that then that's what, what you'd want to do times are hard you know you want to do that right now I don't know that I want to take time to do that but uh, doggies will have fun with it so that is what's left Here's the hand. neck Scott Reese says this is one of his favorite cuts is the neck so I'm going to, in fact, I'm just going to leave it intact, except cut it in the middle, because that, that's probably four pounds of meat. So I'm just going to cut it in the middle. Again, probably going to slow cook this. As you can tell, I'm a big believer in the slow cooker. And that will be a chunk of meat. And we will bag that up as, um, I'll probably take that big vein out or whatever that is right there. Don't think that's a spinal cord. It's a way of, well above the vertebrae. Take that out. But we will uh, throw that in the slow cooker. That will make... Whew, nice meal. Okay, now I'll take that little piece of, kind of square it up, trim it up. Take that other little big vein, look like. Take it out, whatever that thing is right there. Don't want to put it in the grind. But two big pieces of neck meat. About a pound a piece. Good for two people, each. Two people, two people. I like it. Now, we got the shoulder here. I'm going to take the shoulder completely off. And most of you know that on a, uh, a deer or a uh, sheep, and probably most any animal, the shoulder is held on not with a joint, but just by muscle, tendons, such ligaments and things. So that We'll do on this is have another four shank. This is not near as big, obviously, as this rear shank, but um, cut that off about there and cut this off uh, right above the joint. Got some good meat in there. Uh, make good, maybe a soup or such. And uh, get a couple of shoulder roasts out of this. The last one I took the the bone out, the shoulder blade out. I think I'm going to on this one too.
And let's see what I want to do here. I think I'm just going to make a nice shoulder roast. Come across here with a nice roast. This will be the shank. That will be the shoulder roast. That's what I'm going to do. Big bone in there. Big shoulder blade. Could keep that hole and just have a real nice shank with a whole lot of meat on it. That is an idea because I'm going to cut it off about right there. That's not a bad idea. Just leave it all. Again, doing this a little bit different than I did the first one. Not a whole lot, a little bit. That'd make a nice, nice bone dust off. Make a nice uh, uh, shank. Shank of land. I believe they call that. Uh, that's the rear shank. Put him back over there. Kind of laying it out like we're doing it. That'll be the front shank. And this will be the shoulder roast. I believe I'm just going to cut it. Most of the meat's up in here, so I'm going to leave some of this. Probably not cut it in half because I'll try to make in, uh, servings for two. This one's going a whole lot quicker than the first half did, but I had to think a little bit on the first one. Not that I know what I'm thinking about, but I had to think. Get some good meat on that. Probably enough for two people. Got some good meat up in here and here. And that's another shoulder roast there. And uh, we didn't get near as much grind this time as, uh, as we did last time, hamburger grind. But I'm going to keep that. Uh, and I'll just add this to uh, what we did we probably had to pile at least twice that size on the other half because again I cut it up a little bit differently and uh, but I, I like this better um, I like the way I did this side glad I've showed you this side because that's the the way I'm going to prefer to do it I think from now and uh, occasionally you'll find a hair um, but before we, uh, we we're going to uh, use the food saver what I'm probably going to do is uh, get it a system, Jack. What I'm probably going to do is um, wrap it in saran wrap first, each piece, uh, a, a, a serving for two. That's kind of what I'm shooting for here. I'll do a whole roast or uh, maybe three or four of the fillets. Uh, you know, that's. That's four ounces of meat, probably all we're supposed to eat anyway. Put about four of those in a package, enough for two people. And uh, probably save some of these soup bones in case the wife wants to make a uh, soup and put that in there. That would be a nice addition to a soup stock. Uh, but what I'll do is wrap it first in uh, saran wrap. Probably not going to video that. I don't think there's any reason for that. Um, but wrap, wrap it first in saran wrap and then go to the food saver in the uh, bags and... Uh, and uh, seal it in that, mark it as, as what we think it is. I didn't cut the rib, did I? <laughs> I got ahead of myself. But that's why we're probably going to wrap it. And um, that will, uh, should keep a long time. Uh, these are, this is going to be your, your uh, pork chops, except they're not pork, uh, rack of lamb. Um, so, and I'm, you know, not really crazy about how to do this. My understanding is you come in here and, and take off most of this, um, rib, and then you've got some more brisket here you can use for, uh, either stew meat or grind, and, uh, I just even pull off. 
But anyway, you'll want to cut uh, your ribs at about two ribs each, two uh, for each loin. So I'm gonna cut it, cut it across here first, kind of square it up to the to the um, vertebrae here, the backbone. Cut across there. And I'll use my saw. Okay, now we want to probably give two ribs each in each uh, portion. Nice. A little tough, but it'll, it'll cut. And you probably want to come in and take that. Uh, maybe spinal cord's already out of that one. I may have pulled it out when I did something else. But uh, and then two. That was three ribs. But we're probably just going to leave it. Trim off that for grind. That'll be a nice. Got some bone dust on it, but that'll be a nice. Uh, portion there for somebody. So two ribs there, three ribs there. In fact that's gonna be a it's <laughs> gonna be a good I want that one. That's got a lot of meat on it. Uh, so that's uh, the shoulder roast. Now the shoulder roast that is the brisket came off off here. Brisket was like this as you remember it. Okay. So that's the brisket. chops or the uh, whatever you want to call them. Here's some more ribs. I'm going to keep those. The other, the other one we, we bone this out for uh, for uh, hamburger meat I think or lamb, ground lamb. Uh, seems to have an, a, a pretty good decent uh, meat on it. I could cut that off and have a little bit more brisket there but I think we're just going to barbecue that or slow cook it. I'm a big slow cooker guy, so probably slow cook it. Uh, slow cook it for a good while, and then at the end, pour some barbecue sauce in there with it. That hurt you. That's the way I do beef ribs, pork ribs, so I'm sure that'll be good on that too. Um, and do it for about six, seven hours. Uh, but that that should be real good. And I think I'm just going to leave that just like it is. If I can, uh, I, I may cut it in half simply just to be better, be easier to bag up to uh, food save. Just putting food saver like that, going to slow cooker like that, It'd be perfect. All right, that's uh, I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, again, we'll uh, store it in food saver. We'll store it first. Uh, put first some saran wrap around it. My intention of showing you this is not to show you how to do it right, but to show you that it's uh, it can be done by anybody. If you go kill a deer, uh, you're gonna pay somebody. $85 or something like that to process it, $100 pro. I don't even know what they charge anymore. When a couple of hours work, um, you know, is your time worth $50 an hour? Mine is. So anyway, um, you ought to try to do this. And uh, if you're not raising livestock, if you don't have a homestead yet, then um, start thinking about doing that. If you uh, have a homestead and are raising livestock, don't be afraid to get into something like this. Today's about 50 degrees, probably. Um, 50, 55 degrees. You know, it'd be nice if it's a little cooler, but um, it's it's fine. We've got an ice chest over there, and we've already put the first half filled up the ice chest, and we've got another uh, bag of ice and ice chest, and we'll ice it down and um, wrap it up either today or tomorrow. We might just let it sit on ice uh, overnight. It might be might be better to do that, and then uh, uh, and then um, bag it up tomorrow in the food saver. Vacuum seal it. It'll last a long time. I believe that's it. We got some work to do, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you uh, hope you didn't laugh at me too much. If you know what you're doing and saw that I didn't, just it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Don't call me an idiot. I'm trying. I think that's it. We're gone. <laughs>